Hi, I'm Gavin, and welcome back to The Sound Project. Today we have the honor of sitting down with Annie Hollibaugh um, with Ratio Architects, and I'm so glad that you joined us on the podcast. No, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, we've worked together on quite a few projects over mm-hmm. the years, and uh, we'll get into some of that a little bit later, but kind of first I'd, I'd love to uh, know a little bit about what your position at Ratio is even though I already know, um, and then also um, kind of how you got into that as a career. Sure, yeah. So um, uh, I'm an interior designer at Ratio, um, and I work primarily with higher education projects. Um, I've done some um, library projects and a little bit of office design, too. Yeah. So um Starting out, I guess you could say it it happened in the womb. So yeah. my mom's an architect and my dad's a landscape architect. Wow. So growing up, I feel like we on family vacations, we'd always be visiting, you know, just different architectural spaces and commenting on that inside, outside. Um, and then in high school, I started working for an interior designer okay. that was residential, but loved kind of working with with people on their spaces and, and, and just kind of helping to solve any issues that they may have. Um, yeah, so from there, decided to continue um, with getting an interior design degree. I went to Indiana State mm-hmm. and um, basically found that I really enjoyed commercial design mm-hmm. and um, just kind of the, the complexities of, of those project types, mm-hmm. um, the interdisciplinary aspect to it as well, um, just the, the layers of... Oh, gosh, everything that you needed to consider, acoustics being one of them, lighting, it just felt like it was, I just, I enjoyed the challenge so much more. Sure. Um, And then I actually, I I interned at Ratio. Okay. And um, I really appreciated, um, so Ratio being primarily an architectural firm, Mm -hmm. um, but they also have historic preservation and landscape architecture, um, urban planning, uh, graphic design. So when I was there, I... It was just great to get that experience and also understanding, too, like how interdisciplinary some some of these projects could be. Um, And so I I also just really enjoyed the long leash that they gave us. And like I felt like very respected there. I felt like that there was um, a lot of opportunity there. So when I did end up graduating, um, it was the recession, Mm -hmm. but ultimately found my way back. And I've been there for about 10 years now. Um, And I've had many opportunities to work on some really wonderful projects yeah. and, and just to kind of continue growing as a professional. And it's really never a dull moment. It's There's a lot of learning that's involved with interior design. Yeah. Well, and the, one of the things that I always love working with interior designers on projects because Sometimes we are the de facto interior designer on these studios that we design, sure. and and we do renderings, and uh, we know how to make those look cool. But then that's it, it's almost like I say we play one on TV because we're not uh, degreed interior designers. And so when you are involved in projects or we work with other interior designers, it just it's just neat to see uh, when someone does this for a living, uh, uh, how much better the project can be. I mean, I would say the same working with you all as well. I mean, we aren't really trained to be acousticians. You know, we do kind of get a precursor to the importance of acoustics in our spaces, but getting into the technical, and I know you've done a lot of modeling for us to understand how certain spaces are going to sound, especially when you start to apply some, some you know, different materials. I mean, it's been wonderful working with you all, and it, it certainly... Uh, improves our spaces as yeah. well. Well, so. and it, it is something like you said a little bit ago that it, there's so many different uh, disciplines that it takes to make a project successful. It's incredible. You know, and, it's and, incredible. And, and, uh, and you have to work together. You know, there's a lot of, uh, I have heard some consultants in the past say that, like they don't like to work with interior designers because they're at odds with them. Like Shh. that's not the, viewpoint yeah. I like to take. It's, yeah. it's more so like, hey, how do we work together to Absolutely. make this look amazing, yep. uh, but also sound uh, great at the same time? Because like our mission statement for our business is we create rooms that inspire. Yeah. Like that is the whole uh, goal of what we do. And like we could have the best sounding room imaginable, but if it no one wants to be in there and it feels claustrophobic or it's, right. a, you know, the light's not right, um, then we miss the mark in some way. And so like the, you, same, you same help with that. Us. Yeah. Same for us. I mean, it's... So, it's, it's incredible um, with some of these spaces and, and in my 10 years, just learning that um, it could be a really lovely space, but if it's echoey or if, mm-hmm. you know, people can't hear one another speak or they can't even hear themselves speak, I mean, it, it just doesn't function. So yeah. all of these different components need to align to, mm-hmm. to really pull off, you know, 
an amazing space. And, and that's ultimately what we're kind of here to do. Yeah. So. Well, I know that over the years we've worked with Ratio on a ton of projects um, mm -hmm. and you and I together on, on some of them. Um, but we also came in at, at one point, maybe twice, we've come in and done like an AIA continued education learning yep. on acoustics, which um, I know a lot of architecture firms, they like to sub out the acoustics piece because it is such a niche market. It's very and technical. It's, yeah, and, and something mm -hmm. that, that maybe you wouldn't have someone on staff to, to, mm -hmm. to work on that. Um, so we love partnering with you on those Absolutely. sort of things. And, yep. and uh, how often is acoustics brought up like when you're working on a project? I mean, every, every project. Really? I mean, it's, it's so critical to, you know, to, to the spaces and to, you know, just making sure that the, just the variety of space types and just the acoustical needs, it, mm -hmm. it differs so much. I mean, we've, I've worked on, you know, a performing arts hall where, you know, that is a very technical space, but even getting into, I mean, we've worked on some, you know, different classrooms where we need to make sure that we have sound isolation, but mm -hmm. then also, you know, good projection for, you know, the teachers. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally everything. It's yeah. something that you always have to consider. Um, with um, a current project I'm working on with um, deaf and hard of hearing and, and blind and visually impaired people, Another layer has started to, to come into um, acoustics that I, I really had never really considered before. And it is um, considering, you know, all of the things that we typically consider with acoustics and making sure that sound doesn't leak and that sound is, you know, controlled so you don't have the reverb and the echo. Mm -hmm. But then also, especially with the, the blind and visually impaired population, um, the, the contrast between different spaces and, and providing um, spaces that might be a little more live and have more more sound intensity so it can act as like wayfinding. Yes. And so one of the strategies that we had done or that we're considering for this particular project is where we have, you know, elevators and stairs and helping to craft space so that way it, it can act as like, you know, if, it, if there's a little bit more... Um, sound in that in that area yeah, ambience and things. yeah yep. it, it's kind of a, a cue you mm -hmm. know for them to know that okay i'm in you know this kind of this vertical circulation area mm -hmm. and so it's been really interesting to even think about um not necessarily controlling sound yes. you know what i mean but yeah. but controlling it but not and so like allowing it to kind of like you know kind of echo and reverb a little bit and that has it's so mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of another way that yeah. we've been getting into it. Well, and we're involved in that project with you guys, yes, and, you are. and it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been uh, really interesting for us as well because uh, in some cases we're just trying to control the sound and we're trying to remove energy from a space. But like you said, in, in these areas where we want it to feel more lively, because mm -hmm. some of the visually impaired um, um, individuals who would uh, be in these spaces, they require some of that, yep. and, and it's something that's actually a, a benefit and not a detraction, yep. or even things like. Um, you know, changing floor surface materials when you, to indicate when you're in line for something, Absolutely. you know, uh, th yep. those sort of things. Uh, we've just learned a ton and it's just getting started. I know yes. that, that we're going to learn even more as mm -hmm. we go, but, uh, um, with, with your, with your, uh, job, how much freedom do you have to put out something that visually is, is interesting and stunning to you versus just trying to make the, the client's vision come to life? I mean, it's, it's all a balance and it is certainly, it is a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, you know, as we're starting to talk about aesthetics, um, we'll have, um, precedent imagery and usually we'll have a couple different design directions, whether that's going to be something that might feel a little bit more modern or something that might feel a little bit more earthy. And so just kind of getting these images in front of them to get their feedback and mm -hmm. what's their style. Yeah. Um, it's it's always back and forth, yeah. and and it is like that with all of the consultants too. I mean, mm -hmm. it is it, it is a dance mm -hmm. the entire way through, yeah. and so certainly there is freedom, yeah. you know, for for me to you know we are specifying specific materials, and you know what the other component to to this that is a major passion for me is sustainability, mm -hmm. and so looking at the specific materials that we're using and what the human and environmental health is, and and what m makes up that material, you know, chemically and all of that, yeah. and so there's just there's just so many things you mm -hmm. have to consider. So we certainly are helping to kind of guide that ship there, but always with their with yeah. their input. And I think it's important uh, in any project just to be really flexible on that front. You have like to. The, if yep. you come in as a consultant and it's my way or the highway, you have to do it this way. Like those projects never go well. Right. It's just not our style. But if mm -hmm. if uh, you run into that. It's something where you're just always fighting against each other, and I think that the project suffers for it. Yep. Um, but for us, it's like we 
we want to make sure that obviously the end result is that people can hear clearly or they have a good experience in these spaces. But, right. you know, if there's something that we can compromise for the aesthetics or for mm -hmm. um, MEP or structural or anything like yep. that, that is only going to degrade things by one to two percent, um, then let's make that concession right. and not just be so like hard pressed yeah, to get our point across. It's always a conversation. Yeah. It's always a conversation brainstorming together. Yeah. So, so what uh, of your your job being an interior designer? Like, what is your favorite part of it? My favorite part, um, I I just feel really lucky that I feel like con I'm constantly learning. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly being challenged. I feel like I'm always meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, I loved college. I loved that, you know, we were on semesters and it was like at the end of the semester, I always loved that. It was always bittersweet, right? But it's like you always could look forward to the next semester and all of the new kids you were getting ready to meet and all the yeah. different teachers. And it feels like with interior design and the project types that we have, even they're longer. I mean, yeah. we're talking years. Mm -hmm. um, there's... I mean, it, it, it make, it's always changing yeah. and you're always having to learn more. And it just seems like the industry itself, you know, is kind of in lockstep with the world. I mean, we're seeing just with technology. I mean, everything seems to be rapidly improving or not, but mm -hmm. there's change and there's sure. always things to learn. from. Yeah, that. I, I love that about what we do as well, because it's like. I know a lot about acoustics, but I don't know everything. And and every project, like the one that we're working on together, I'm, right. I'm learning so much that I've never even thought about. Same. You know, and it's Pretty I've been doing this for 23 years. It's you incredible. Know, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really enjoy that. And I also like, and I think that you're kind of alluding to this, is that you get to meet new people in this yes. and then become uh, friends with them over mm -hmm. the course of a project. And, mm -hmm. and uh, with these projects being a year, two years totally. long, it's like you really get to know those people. And then you can kind of, collectively celebrate that when the job is done. Absolutely. Like, and I'm sure for you, since so much of your job is the the visual output, which people focus on, like I'm, I bet it's, it's pretty intimate. Yeah. I bet yeah. it's awesome when you, you get to go to a grand opening of a place or, oh, and or you something. see people in the space mm -hmm. and using it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's really, it is really rewarding. Yeah. Um, and also sort of terrifying at times, sure. but no, it's, it, I, I feel incredibly, I feel very lucky to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with my particular focus in, you know, um, uh, higher ed and, and, and library work and, um, it's so community driven. Mm -hmm. And so another, another project that we've worked on together is the, the Ivy tech campus yeah. in Muncie. And I loved that project, especially because their facilities were just so outdated Yeah. And we ended up doing three buildings for them. And so it was almost like a, I, I love the complex projects yeah. and I love um, with this one, it, you know, it, just all of the different program types that they had um, and helping them to almost like master plan their campus in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing that the quality of spaces that a lot of these kids were going to be getting after this was all said and done, just night and day. And yeah. it just felt, it felt really good to be mm -hmm. able to like work on something that would have such a huge impact for a lot of kids who yeah. may not go on to more traditional, you sure. know, college and stuff like that. So I feel like that seems like a lot of ratios projects have mm -hmm. like a community element to we, it. We do. Yeah, yeah we which do. Is, it was really fun. Like we, we, uh, um, love to get involved with those types of things too, because most of our work is, 90% is out of state or overseas. And so when we do get to do things locally and you get to drive by that it's place nice. or walk in and, yeah. and be like, man, that, that made a difference right here. Absolutely. You know, which is great. Yep. Um, I'm sure it's also a challenge with your job to where when you're working with larger organizations, a lot of times when we're doing studios, it's for one person in their home. And we, all we got to do is please that one person. Sure. I bet for yours, it's it's a little more it can, difficult. It can get pretty <laughs> complex. Yeah, especially if it is a state project or um, if you have different stakeholders. Absolutely. I know, especially with our public library work, I mean, oftentimes, you know, we need to go out and, and actually meet with the the, the neighbors, right? Yeah. And so we're, host, we're hosting a lot of different workshops and gathering feedback from them. Um, Currently, with with the um, with the current project that I'm working on, I mean, we've got multiple levels of leadership um, with the Ivy Tech project. I mean, because it was an entire campus, we were having to meet with um, all of these different, all of the different program heads and students. And so, I mean, it was like nursing and construction management, HVAC. I mean, it's just you are having to meet so many people and gather so much information from them and, and what they need. Um, those projects are so much fun because I get to kind of dive into their world a little bit. And that's where like that learning really doesn't stop. It's yeah. like, tell me how to make a he like a nursing head wall work. I have no, I didn't know, but now <laughs> sure. it's like, I kind of understand I'm not, you know, specialist by any stretch, but I mean, you really do learn so much. And, yeah. um, 
yeah. So it's just, yeah, there's, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, meeting new people. Yeah. Which is great. I, I think that, um, I'm curious, how much of your job are you, are you creating renderings for, for people to look at? I mean, the so the design process is just, it's such a long process. Mm-hmm. I mean, going from just early pre-design, you know, where you're just kind of like in data gathering mode and programming, schematic design, design development, construction document. I mean, the, the process is so long. Um, really, the, the time when we are doing the renderings is going to be like just a small portion of it when we, we are just trying to convey a certain idea. With, sure. So that would be kind of in the schematic design design development but honestly in this day and age i mean our clients are so sophisticated Mm -hmm. they know what's out there um they they're all so smart and so with it that that's kind of the expectation at this point and to be able to kind of convey ideas and to help them understand space Mm -hmm. um we're doing renderings a lot and maybe you know the quality obviously it it depends right but um I mean, a lot of these tools that we're, we're able to use today with Revit and Inkscape and, and other softwares, I mean, it's just incredible yeah. what you can convey. And, and we use it a lot, too, just for ourselves. Uh, sure. I don't know how people did it before with just CAD. We, we I, talk about that, too, because we, we do most of our renderings in SketchUp with Inkscape. And, yep. um, yeah, there's a lot of images that when we send them to the studio owners and they're like, uh, they post it on their social media and people are like, I didn't know the room was finished already. And it's like, no, it's, it's like, it, it's, it's so real. just a, a rendering. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think about back when, before we did that, um, I mean, we created awesome spaces back then. It still worked out and they right. looked great, but right. um, man, it's so much easier now because you can get just real time feedback. It, it, sometimes we even do like live sessions on video calls with people. We'll have Enscape up Absolutely. and we'll just say like, hey, change that color to this and like, oh, that's way better. And this wood type, could you just totally. make that walnut or whatever? Yep. Um, it just uh, allows people, because everyone's so visual, you know, yep. that's your whole world, yep. you know, yep. it's, they want to see that. Yeah. And it just helps with the, the collaboration. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they, they are at the end of the day, this is their space and we're kind of just the, you know, the vehicle to get them there. But it, yeah. so it does help with that collaboration, making do sure you, they get what they, what they want. Yeah. And do you see any uh, uh, trends with AI with your renderings or anything like that? Have you? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, we haven't. It's it's tricky, right? Mm-hmm. And so we are being very careful with that because you just don't know where that stuff is being generated from. Right. And so from a copyright standpoint, we, we have personally been very cautious to yeah. start utilizing that from a rendering perspective. Now, we have used it to create almost like um, if we do, you know, public engagement or something like that, we have yeah. to create like personality profiles. And so you know, but yeah. yeah, in terms of rendering, not, not, not yet, not but, yet, yet. but same I mean, here. that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Same here. It's, yeah. it's something we haven't, uh, uh, dipped our toes in too much, but we did have a client just recently send us instead of inspiration images. Cause that's usually what we ask for is say, Hey, just send us a bunch of photos of yep. rooms that you really enjoy. Um, instead of sending that, he did a prompt in chat GBT and sent us actual renderings. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's that's, starting to be a thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that will go. I mean, I think that all those renderings that were sent, um, uh, it's kind of some of it were a little comical, like where speakers were placed or really? what they looked like, and oh, and so it's a little skewed. But um, yeah, I, I think there's probably the point some, across. Right? Yeah, probably, there's probably some opportunities early on in the design process just to get a theme and then dial absolutely, it in. Absolutely, absolutely. So one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was uh, a project we recently worked on together mm-hmm. at a library. Mm-hmm. Um, beautiful space you guys had designed, and um, there is a kids play area in there sure. that is uh, open to the rest of the library. It's a very open space. It feels very inviting when you walk in. Um, But there were, uh, you know, some people who had visited the library would say, well, I'm trying to read a book quietly. And then the the children are, are, you know, playing and and having fun and it's distracting. So um, do you run into that often where it's like... um, People are, are wanting that open plan space, but it creates issues Absolutely. Uh, isolation-wise. Yeah, I feel like especially for our library projects, I mean, libraries and the evolution of libraries, it has changed so much. Yeah. Um, you know, what once was a very shh environment, we're seeing all of these different programs and services come into the library, mm-hmm. and it's really becoming like this cornerstone for these communities. And so, especially for this particular project, it was a smaller branch location. So we didn't have a ton of space to spread out. Staff was limited. So, I mean, they wanted that, that visibility yeah. To the to the children's zone to be able just to, to you know securely watch them make sure that you know they had their eyes on them, and it it is challenging because 
Um, and especially for me, I mean, acoustics is incredibly technical mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to make sure that you're giving people, your client what they want at the end of the day. And so if mm -hmm. they say we want a big open space, yeah. um, you know, you're like, okay, we'll, we'll do what we can to, you yeah. know, accommodate that. And so I think, you know, for me personally in my career, like I'm having to kind of continue to learn, you know, maybe when to push back a little bit or maybe when to, um, you know, are you sure? Maybe we do need to enclose this space, yeah. you know, just helping them yeah. to understand their different expectations sure. in the long term. And um, yeah, so it's been really wonderful having you come in, analyze the space. I know you've been able to go in and really document the different sound levels and come mm -hmm. up with a, a, a wonderful report to share with them. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately your findings were, if you want to solve the issue, you need to enclose it. Yeah. You know, we can add some, you know, different absorbative panels and things like that to help with that sound reverb and echo. But at the end of the day, you know, we really did need to enclose it. So it was really great to, to hear mm -hmm. that from you mm -hmm. um, and, and to continue to work with you on solving these, these, you know, challenges. Yeah. I always tell people it's like trying to contain sound is like trying to waterproof an area. Yeah. Like if you, it has to be a complete barrier sealed off in order to, to make a difference. Cause otherwise sound will find a way. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, that's one thing that it will do. If there's a smallest gap in the system, it'll, it'll leak out. And um, I know that another project ratio was involved with that we got involved with later, um, not the initial design, but um, a little bit later on was the uh, recording studios at the Carmel library. Yes. Um, and that is, uh, you know, like you said, these library spaces are changing. Yep. The fact that there's a recording studio mm -hmm. now that yep. people can rent in out. In the digital and, media and, lab. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, um, and they have 3D printing uh, mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just the evolution of a library has changed a lot, which then institutes some some more sound challenges. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, you know, with having to construct it in such a way so you're not disturbing other people who are trying to it, concentrate. It, it gets into the structure, absolutely. Yeah. And and all of the, the vibrations that can happen and yeah. how you have to truly isolate it. Yeah, it's... It's it's incredibly technical, yeah. so we're very happy to have you locally to, to work with. Well, thanks, and I always know when Ratio brings us a project that it's going to be fun, it's going to be meaningful, you know, and That's, impactful to the community. Yep. So, um, just really appreciate you, and, Thank and you. Um, excited to continue working on the projects we are working on together, and yep. many in the future. So Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's been another episode of the Sound Project. Thanks for being a part of it. Really curious if you could comment below, what's the most beautiful space you've ever been in? And we'll see you next week. <laughs>